the music that you were hearing is an excerpt from a tribute by Pandit Satish Vyas uh, in a Santur concert of Kabir Center held in May this year and dedicated to Vijaya Mule. My name is uh, Dolores and uh, with Dipti this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> we are your we are your co-facilitators. Okay. Uh, we are all gathered here for Vijaya Mule, Akka to most of us, who lived a very rich life for 98 years on this planet, and we are all fortunate to have shared it with her. Vijaya Mule was a documentary filmmaker, film historian, educationist, who during her lifetime won many accolades including the V. Shantaram Lifetime Achievement Award in 2002. For all of us who knew her, we all knew that she was always up to something. If she was not writing an article, a book, a manuscript, she was cooking up some laddus, which she shared always very willingly to, with all of us. She was an inspiration to many of us, a woman who wrote from Rajas and Yogis to Gandhi and beyond, in 2008 at the age of 87. I believe she was working on another book that she had embarked on the age of 90. I can almost hear her chuckle right now as I write and share this with you. I look around this room and I see a room full of love, full of respect for Akka, for Vijaya. Please do take the time today to write a few of your <coughs> memories and just notes in the memory book that we have put outside also in her memory. The images that we see or have seen give us a glimpse of her wonderful life and her accomplishments. We will have a few members of the community to share their thoughts, experiences, and moments with her. And also family, family members who are here will be sharing. Uh, the fact that this memorial has been organized jointly by three Montreal-based organizations, uh, SERA, Centre sur l'Asie du Sud, Kabir Cultural Centre, and SOC, the South Asian Women's Community Centre, is testament to Akka's deep roots and engagement with the diasporic South Asian community in the city and her wide knowledge and organizational skills. Ever the institution builder and sustainer, she was actively involved in all of them, as we will soon hear. As well, she had strong links and friendships with people in the film and cinema community and many others who you will also hear from today. Uh, so we will start with, um, and these were Akka's wishes, uh, Doha by Kabir that will be uh, presented, performed for us by Hita, who is accompanied by Rakesh Sethi. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Hita and I f I'm very pleased and feel very privileged to be asked by Akka's family to sing a bhajan of Kabir and I'm told um, she had wished that this bhajan be sung if there was a memorial for her. I've known Akka for many many years and in fact both Akka and her younger sister Mrs. Ambike were like family to us, me. Raghu and our son Nikhil and I'm very very happy to be singing this as a tribute to her. Thank you. Hattery 
छोड़ चला बंजारा हटरी छोड़ चला बंजारा हटरी छोड़ चला बंजारा छोड़ 
चला बंजारा। The next thing that we'll be watching is a film that Akka had made, a short animation, which is an ek, an ek or ekta, which she made in 1974. So Johnny will play that, and it's so pertinent to what is happening all across the world right now. And she was definitely forewarning us, foreshadowing whatever is going to be happening also. So, ek anek or ekta, how important it is to be diverse. Yeah. 
गांव के पास चिड़ियों के दोस्त चूहे रहते थे और उन्होंने चिड़ियों का जाल कर दिया तो देखा फिर तुमने अनेक फिर एक हो जाते हैं तो कैसा मजा आता है दीदी how Akka could remember what it was like to be a child and to convey it and I'm watching it and thinking I have to show it to my granddaughter who's just under three and we speak to her in Bangla but language it doesn't matter you you get you get it it's uh, just just wonderful um, I would now like to invite Sri uh, who is a member of all the organizations and also beloved eldest child of Akka thank you Sri you saw has been seen by millions of Indians, children, grown-ups. Uh, Akka, people would come up to her and say, and they would start singing the song. And that's how they remember the particular film. Uh, anyway, I will go on to talk about what I was going to say about my mother. It is almost four months since uh, Akka passed away, and it's really too early to be able to process everything and have a perspective on what she meant to us and what she meant to uh, you know, the world. Um, as we gather here today, a continent away, there is another organization celebrating Vijaya's contribution as a trailblazer, and that is the Indian Women's Documentary and Filmmakers Association. It's happening today, or maybe a different time, but this is the time that it was supposed to happen in India. <coughs> so there is no reason to mourn. She would be the first person to say this, that there is a normal ebb and flow of life. Uh, she would have said that 
etadapi gamashati. Uh, this means this too shall pass away. And of course, anybody who knew Akka would know that she would not be using a two-word shloka, but would have at least a big stanza from the Gita or from the Mahabharata, which she loved. She was reading the Mahabharata in the original uh, in her last days because she thought it was one of the greatest epic novel representing today's life. So it is. Uh, she was very passionate about that. Mahabharata has something like 100,000 verses, so she was working her way through those 100,000 verses. Uh, <clears throat> thankfully, she left this world before Modi's unprecedented victory. And I think the demise of democracy that has accompanied that uh, and is uh, blowing multiple blows. And to many of the people in this room, the fact that uh, we have uh, had small erosions which have now culminated in the, uh, uh, the ordinance, abrogation of the ordinance 470 is only that. So she would have been very sad. In fact, she wanted to go and vote for Modi, not for Modi, excuse me. She wanted to vote against Modi uh, on the 15th of May, which is the election, and we told her that her vote will not make a difference, so it's okay for her not to go. The <clears throat> anyway, I should not use this occasion to stand on the soapbox to bemoan the fate of India. A fraud, it is a celebration of the life of Ijamule, organized by three organizations that uh, Dolores mentioned, uh, SOC, SERAS, and uh, South, uh, the uh, Kabir Cultural Center. And on behalf of the three daughters of Vijaya, known by everyone as Akka, I want to thank the organizers. Many of you know Akka in different contexts and capacities. As an educationist who brought the life of the site program in the 70s to this, uh, at the Center for Educational Technology that developed films, educational materials uh, to broadcast uh, to 24,000 villages, across India using satellite uh, space that was given by the Americans as under the PL-480 plan. So those who know India would know what PL-480 was. It was uh, meant to be uh, uh, rice and wheat to be given to India. Uh, and the money did not go back to the U.S. It stayed in India for development. So that was, in a nutshell, the PL-480, a very important uh, landmark in uh, India's life. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, uh, her uh, already it has been. She was a, a film critic. She uh, researched, and but more importantly, she re researched the award-winning. Uh, uh, she was an award-winning author of the remarkable book that she researched and wrote right here in Montreal at the McGill Center for Research and Teaching on Women. And my colleagues from MCRTW are here. Um, uh, so I, uh, I really would just focus on her personal uh, narrative and touch upon the influence of the many extraordinary women, my <coughs> grandmother, my Saraswati Bai Ranade, and uh, Akka, Vijaya Mule, and Masi, Sushila, Ambike, on the three of us. <coughs> Their role is really important in this narrative. Akka and her two sisters, Durga and Sushila, were born in Badlapur and Dumbivli in a Kokhnas the Brahmin family. Our grandmother, Mai, uh, became a widow when Akka was about eight and Masi was about uh, one and a half years old. Mai had had no education, which is not surprising. She had the daunting task of raising three daughters on her own. Given the challenges women, especially widows, faced back in 1928, Mai set about supporting her family doing all kinds of work. No job was below her dignity. She cooked in people's homes, washed dishes, and sold vegetables to somehow make ends meet. 
She inculcated, she inculcated the value of hard work uh, <coughs> in her daughters. Akka used to travel with Mai on the local train every early in the morning to, the, uh, to buy vegetables uh, from the mandi, bring it back and sell it in Badlapur and later in Thane and even in Dadar. Mai was very determined that no one, none of her daughters should, nobody should take advantage of her daughters as she had been. And she saw education as a way out for them. Fortunately, all her daughters were very intelligent and excelled in school. They got scholarships and as they grew older, they gave tuitions to children who were in lower grades. Akka's schoolmate, was Ahilya Rangnekar, Nirandive. People would recognize that uh, she was the sister of B.T. Rangdive, the Ma Marxist communist of India. And uh, uh, the two of them would go to rallies called Prabhat Peri. Uh, these are morning street uh, demonstrations against the British rule. This would happen every morning. It's a little bit like the climate change the demonstrations that we have seen in the past few days. And they sang lustily on the streets anti-British songs. Uh, we children learned many of the songs from Akka. Ahilya initiated Akka into left-wing politics that lasted a lifetime, even though she stopped being a card-carrying member of the CPI after the Soviet army overran Hungary in 1956. Akka was admitted to Ruya College in Bombay, or Mumbai now, uh, after she graduated from high school. But Mai was under pressure uh, from people to get Akka married. Since she, at 17, she was uh, already considered to be very old for marriage by the standards of the day. With the help of her cousin, Mai placed an ad in a newspaper. Mai believed in being truthful and modest. So she, her ad said, looking for a match for a 17-year-old Koknastha Brahmin girl who is, looks OK and has completed her matriculation. No dowry will be given. My father, Kashinath Nilkant Mule, we called him Bapu, who was working in Patna, was intrigued by, the ad, by this ad. And he came to see our mother. He, was, he asked her, when he had a chance to speak to her privately, whether she was being coerced into marriage. She replied, no, but I have two conditions. One, I want to study after marriage, and two, I want to choose my name uh, after marriage. This was the custom that people in Maharashtra, women changed not only their uh, last name, but also their first name to match their husband's name. So usually Lakshmi, Narayan, that would be the kind of combination. But she wanted her name to be Vijaya. Vijaya means victory. And that is how Gangu, Gangu was transformed into Vijaya. Gangu was also considered to be an old-fashioned name in those days. It was rather unusual that there were no elders accompanying Bapu. It turned out that his family was very upset that he had chosen a Koknastha Brahmin girl who would not bring any dowry into the family. Bapu and Akka got married on January 6, 1940, and they came to live in Patna. Uh, Bihar in those days had not seen too many women who were so bold as to walk on the streets alone, ride a bicycle, <clears throat> and accompany a man, her husband, to see movies at the bioscope. It did not matter if the film was in English or in Hindi, they went to see a film every week. And that was the start of Akka's love affair with cinema. On arrival in Patna, Akka started studying for the immediate exam, intermediate exam. But fate intervened, and I was born on May 9th, just a week before she turned 20. Teasingly, she would tell, say that she was a mere teenager when I was born, 
because she was 19 years, 11 months, and three weeks old at that time. <laughs> we were born five years apart, uh, timed so that she could complete her studies. And, uh, th th and th this was her way of saying that uh, she knew all about family planning. <laughs> uh, our aunt Sushila, Masi, and many people here know her, uh, came to live with us to help with taking care of me. She had graduated from high school at the age of 14. Bapu insisted that she should study as well. Amasi enrolled in Patna Women's College to study Sanskrit as well. She had an exceptional gift with languages. She learned to read, write Bengali in Patna by interacting with other Bengali girls in the neighborhood. She learned Rabindra Shangeet, Rabindra Nath Tagore's poems from the, her Bengali friends. She gave all three of us an amazing legacy of Bengali songs, which we imbibed as she put us to bed at night. She spoke and taught Sanskrit and German, and she, like a sec she was like a second mother to us, especially when Akka went to study in England. Bharati was born in 1945, just after Akka completed her MA. She stood first in Patna University. She was offered a full scholarship by the Bihar government to study in England. Akka was reluctant to accept the scholarship, but Bapu insisted that she should go, saying that he was there to take care of his daughters, with Mercy and Mai's help. So he was a, a feminist way ahead when the word was invented. I think I have a page mixed up here, so I'm going to look at it a little bit. We got a letter from uh, somebody who was uh, a student while Akka was in England. She did uh, practice teaching. Uh, she, was, she was in Leeds and she went out to the schools. And we got a letter from one of her students. Uh, Sheila Bai, and she actually was uh, somebody who said, I, had, I, oft, um, I often wondered what became of uh, Vijaya Mule, as she had obviously been a very special person to have come so far to study in Leeds. Uh, and she had gone on to say that uh, in, in her class, Akka had spoken about Rabindranath Tagore, and read his poems, and they were very, she was very moved by it, so she went to the Leeds Library looking for a book of poems by Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, and so she went on to say that thanks to the internet, I was able to find, again, 12 years ago, and at last could thank her for the impact she made on me all those years ago. The internet made it obvious that she had been influential in lots of other people's lives, too a lovely, wonderful lady who will be missed by many, many people, including me. <coughs> Akka had signed a five-year bond with the government of Bihar when she accepted the scholarship. Within two months of her return to India, Akka was assigned to become the principal of uh, the Kamla Gorbole Kanya Pat Shala. You saw a photograph of that in the films that were, the photographs that were shown. Kamla Gurbole Kanya Patshala was a school in Dalton Ganj, Jharkhand, Bihar, which is a tribal area. And uh, the, it was a small town, and the school staff were very proud that they had an England, England return lady to become the principal of the school. And uh, the, uh, in that particular, so they were ready for innovation. But keeping girls in school was a big challenge because they would be married off at a young age. 
Within no time, the place was hustling and bustling with new ways of enticing parents to keep their daughters in school. Unfortunately, Akka was the principal for a very just over a year because she was pregnant with Suhas and had to return to Patna because the facilities in Dalton Ganj were very, very poor. I learned a lot about later on about what it means to about maternal health and maternal mortality in small communities. Suhasni was born on November, in November 1950 in Patna Hospital. Several people came to my father to express their grief that the third child was also a girl. My father replied to them in no uncertain words, she is beautiful, she is healthy, and her mother is doing well. What more could one ask for? In Patna, Akka, along with other film enthusiasts, started the Patna Film Society. Akka herself has written about it in her, the first chapter of her book, the, the, From Rajas and Yogis to Gandhi and Beyond, Representation of India in the International Cinema of the 20th Century, which Dolores alluded to. Soon, Akka moved to Patna, from Patna to Delhi to work at the Ministry of Education in 1954. In some ways, the move to Delhi was hard for the whole family. Bapu died soon after we moved to Delhi. Akka was reliving the tragedy Mai had faced approximately at the same age. Bapu's death was a big blow to Akka. She had lost the one person who loved her unconditionally and made it possible for her to spread her wings. She has often told us, especially in the last few years, what a terrible sacrifice he had made for her. Not a terrible sacrifice, but a great sacrifice. I, I don't think he ever thought it was a terrible sacrifice. The Film Society movement spread to many cities, and a, a pan-India Film Society movement was born. The Federation of Film Societies of India was founded by Satyajit Ray as the president, and Akka and Chatanandas Gupta as joint secretaries. I will not talk about this except to say that our home in Kakanagar was the Delhi headquarters of the FFSI. Many international film festivals were organized around the dining table. And I used to sleep on a pile of films because there was no place to store them, so they were under my bed. <laughs> I could go on and on, but I won't recount what many already know about her public persona. The one letter that describes Akka's house in Delhi was written by Rina Gill, a friend and a media professional. <coughs> she says, to say that Akka was a phenomenal woman is probably a gross understatement. Much is known about her wide range of interests and professional pursuits, as also her many achievements. Perhaps less widely discussed is the strong influence she had in shaping the lives of young professionals, especially women. I had the good fortune of meeting Akka when I was 23. Within a week, I was absorbed into her wide circles of family and friends, each with a strong and distinct personality. Some with a brooding intellect, others with the that special touch of madness that comes with exceptional creativity, all passionate about their work and determined to make a difference in the world. To a young woman like me, still trying to find my professional moorings, it was a rare opportunity to discuss ideas and broaden my horizons. It was from Akka that I learned what it means to lead with professionalism, integrity, and compassion. As the director of the Center for Educational Technology, into which she had recruited me, she was firm in demanding quality results, but fair and even-handed, always encouraging new ideas, providing unstinting support to help <coughs> us achieve our vision. Her open-door policy often meant having to carry a big 
large part of her unfinished work home. But we were never a world, uh, there was never a world of complaint. Akka's hospitality was legendary. During the 1977 International Film Festival in India, her house became a veritable hostel for all waif of strays trying to catch up uh, with the world cinema. Akka had absolutely no idea who or, or how many people were staying in her house. But somehow, miraculously, there was always enough food. We managed to squeeze into her old Fiat car, which would set off at lightning speed on the dot at 6.30. Anyone who was, not, who was even 30 seconds late was left behind. On that, there was no compromise. Unsurprisingly, 6.29 a.m. sounded like the migration of the wild beast in the Serengeti. We'd all ch uh, stagger back home uh, past midnight, and the cycle would repeat itself the next day. Some of my happiest memories and are centered around that cold uh, winter in January. It's coming to an end. <laughs> As a result, Akka's unconditional acceptance of all of us, we drop, we drop in and drop out of her house at will. In many respects, we were rather like her old dog, Sheru, who would disappear for days, even weeks, and end only, and, uh, end only to uh, reappear at, at her doorsteps, bedraggled and starving, but assured of a warm welcome. So it was with us. We just arrived without warning. No questions were asked, no explanations given. We were just coming home. When we last met, I could see that she was fading and started trying to prepare for the inevitable. But despite that, I find myself totally unequipped to deal with her passing. Perhaps subconsciously, I had hoped that she would live forever. Rest in peace, dear Akka. Thank you for your formidable spirit and strength and your authenticity, warmth, and love and generosity. I'm sure you have already started shaking up things in heaven. It's an honor to speak about and share my memories about Akka with all of you. I met Akka in 1986 when I had joined Cinemart Foundation in New Delhi, where Akka was the treasurer. We all had grown up listening to Ek Chidiya and Ek Chidiya on Doordarshan, but it was an honor to meet her and finally, you know, meet the creation of that wonderful animation that you all saw. I was 21 years of age and was awed at seeing Akka coming to the office on Safdarjan Enclave in a Fiat. I had grown up in smaller cities in India, where in that era, not as many people drove and were actually holding key positions in cinema. But Akka, of course, held a key position at the Censor Board of Film a certification, a certification and also ha held a key position at the National Council of Educational Research and Training. I actually will share a few moments of, you know, what we have shared as a family with her. And, you know, I'll actually just share all those, uh, rather talk about all the special uh, places that she's held in our hearts also. And what I always find amazing is that she always took the time to for everybody of every single age group. I mean, she could she could come into a room and by the end of the evening, and most of you who knew her knew that by the end of the evening, she would have somehow spoken to every single person in that room and knew something about every single individual also. Uh, I remember capturing, I always take, you know, used to always have my camera with me. And I ended up capturing many moments, and one of them was with Ali and her. They used to always sneak in and St. John's and watch really bad soap operas. But the reason they were watching all those opera, opera, operas were so hasty, wasn't it? And they used to just, you know, cuddle up and watch them. And I ended up capturing a couple of those kind of moments. I think she is such an unforgettable individual for me, with her unforgettable smile. You know, that was one of the other things that I actually often captured also. 
Uh, there were several moments that I ended up capturing with friends, and Tom, you're right there. <laughs> and, you know, and what I loved is that she used to always cuddle up with all the young children in the room as well, and, you know, w wanted to know everything about them and their interests and details also. Uh, somehow she always found, you know, we, uh, Ali and I, whenever we went back to India, we managed to make sure that we spent some time with her. The last year, uh, actually in December and January when I was there, I ended up staying overnight uh, because I really thought that I wanted to spend as much time with her and just having breakfast and uh, dinner with her. And she was always so welcoming with every single person. And these were some other moments that I actually shared with her when Alia came in uh, a couple of years ago and we all cuddled and huddled in the bed that she had. And somehow she came out and ended up speaking to every single person who visited her. And I knew that, you know, somehow she had that energy always. My father wanted to visit her every single time I wanted to go and visit her in Delhi. My father himself is, 90, is 88 now. And a couple of years, actually, when he was 87, he had gone to meet with her. And one of the first things that Akka asked him, Gupta ji, how old are you? You know, Akka always wanted to know everybody's age because she wanted to tell about her own. And so Papa said, I'm 87. And he, she said, uh, retorted and she said, I'm exactly 10 years older than you. And my father was always amused also. And then at that particular last time, uh, when Papa had gone also, when he was 87 and Akka was 97, Shri said, and I'm 77. So I had a picture, which actually I have I've named it as 97, 87, 77. <laughs> so that's my other memory of, you know, which has been captured and always will be there. And of course, uh, there were moments when, you know, I used to always uh, ask Akka about cinema. We used to have amazing conversations. And a couple of times I used to ask her, it's like, Akka, what is your secret? And if you had to share a piece of wisdom with people, what would it be? So the first time when I asked her, she was 82. And I asked her, I said, Akka, if you had to, after all these years of experience and, you know, so many wonderful journeys that you've taken, what would you like to share and have somebody hold on to? She thought for some time. And after some thought, she said to me, she said, one thing that I take away is that I can be wrong. And one should always have the humility. A few years later, I think she was in her early 90s, I went back and I asked her, uh, Akka, if you could actually, what would be that secret now? And if that's something that you had to share with people and without even batting an eyelash, and she said, I can still be wrong. Mm -hmm. And that was what Akka was about, you know, and she never, you know, stopped from actually admitting certain things and sharing stuff. And I'm so happy and glad that, you know, one of the things that we have in Montreal kept on as a legacy is to have her, you know, uh, she started off the film festival with us. And I'm really, really happy that I actually am part of that festival now. And last time when I was meeting with her in, in January, I, you know, I told her all about it. And she was asking me all these various poignant questions. You know, how, is, how are things going? How, what kind of films have you uh, managed to bring? She was willing to actually, again, give me another book of something that she had actually just uh, gotten. And she had so much to share. And what always impressed me is that she remembered so many more details than I could ever do. Akka, you will be always in our heart. Always unforgettable. Always loving. Thank you for everything. I invite Dr. Morris, David Morris, who was a, her doctor as well when she was in Montreal and a very dear friend. This is a very difficult moment for me because surrounded by all this wisdom, I feel humbled to know what to say. Uh, I, I knew Akka for over 30 years. Um, and when we met, she was 
very nervous because I think some of my colleagues had made her feel old, which was something she never felt. Now, last night I was thinking, what can I really say about her? Because talking about someone who has died is always impossible. One forgets things, one remembers things. And I realized Akka is not dead. This is not a mourning ceremony at all. She lives on in all of us. She dented the world, as far as I can see, every inch of the way she lived. She left memories in all of us, which will make us remember not just her, but the things we should do on her behalf. She made us remember things which were important, both morally, and she was a very moral person, and intellectually. She was so demanding, it was almost scary, because if you had an argument with her, she would pull you over the rails to make sure that you really justified it and that you really said it properly. So all of us carry those scars with us. She hasn't died. She's with us still. Uh, the one time I met her when we really had an argument the other way around is when she really began to feel that she wasn't achieving as much as she should be, which for Akka was ridiculous, totally ridiculous. And that's when we had the discussions together, which I think led her to start from Rajas, um, which she kept me up to date on all the time. And when she finished it, she turned to me, she gave me a copy and said, what am I going to do now? I said, you're going to write another one. And I think uh, she took me semi-seriously, but unfortunately I don't think seriously enough, because I think if she'd started another book, she'd be here telling me off, uh, because inspiration and hope motivates people the most. So I want to join with you in thanking Akka for having been our friend, for, to thank Akka for having left us dented and changed and inspired in so many different ways, and not to mourn her at all. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was a great honor. And knowing her was the greatest honor of all. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Uh, me especially. I, I would like to say so many things about the car, but whatever time I have, I will just uh, show my uh, gratitude, my love for a car. Uh, I'm, first time I met a car in the 70s, when Chiri was living in Victoria Avenue house. Uh, Akka and Mossy's visits were very anticipated by all of us. They come together or they come separately. It was always a pleasure to see them on their visit to Montreal. In early visits, I did not know much about Akka. Her work, her profession, her activity, nothing. Thus, she was Shiri's mother. And her motherly and loving interaction brought us closer to her instantly. I think this is for all of us here. Uh, South Asia Community Center, I'm talking about how she is involved with SOC. South Asia Community Center was created in, early, it was not South Asia uh, Community Center at that time, not women were attached to that one. Uh, in uh, 81, and Akka was a strong supporter of SOC and was always there to help. She was there in our early fundraising garage sales and it, uh, she, she was also there when we went through a turmoil. After a period of difficulties and when SAC was re-established in 1985-86 at McDonald House uh, at Do Dominic Street, uh, we had no funding. Many of us offered our volunteer time. Akka was in Montreal and came in full force to help us. Akka's offer was very much appreciated and she was designated as honorary coordinator. A formally, a formally, a contract was prepared for her, her position for a period she was in Montreal. And in place of remuneration, 
it was written in the contract that daily she would have free tea or coffee of her choice. <laughs> she signed that contract gracefully. Uh, at that time in McDonald House, we were given two rooms, one room for the classes, teaching English and French, and another larger room for office and daycare center uh, together, where we would have two to five children to take care while mothers were taking the language classes. Just imagine, we were answering the phone, contacting funding agency, at that time taking care of children, crying or demanding our attention and Akka holding a child in her arm and continue the conversation on the phone. I learned a lot with Chiri at that time and we worked together. So. I'll mention a period at SOC in 1986. Over 150 Tamil refugees were found drifting off the shores of Newfoundland in two overfilled lifeboats. They had been drinking for three days, sent away from their boat by some corrupt smugglers. Although some unfriendly reactions were there in the media, thankfully at this time the government reacted in a humane way. Most of the refugees came to Montreal and SOC took up the call to help. We were a small organization, as Sadiga said, with our volunteer coordinator, Akka, and we were not really equipped to deal with this urgent situation. But many people came forward to volunteer, and I volunteered to help Akka at SOC over the next few months. And I had the honor of privilege of working very intensely uh, with Akka uh, during this time. I got to experience firsthand all her marvelous abilities and talents that allowed SOC to not only help many Tamil refugees, but also offer a warm, kind home away from home where traumatized people could finally relax and know they would be safe. I admired Akka's humanity as she was always kind, respectful, and compassionate with everyone. Her energy and work ethic are of course famous, and I had to wonder how a woman 30 years older than myself seemed to have so much more energy than I did. There was a lot of media attention at the time, which could have turned in the wrong direction, as we see today uh, when refugees or Im immigrants make the news. But Akka had the political savvy and the media expertise to inform and indeed charm the reporters who visited us at SOC, and the press was quite positive. The need for food, clothing, housing, legal papers, medical care, it all got done. There were already many Tamil refugees who had been helped by SOC in the early 80s, and some had become SOC members and supporters. One was Grace Gomez. She came forward and volunteered to work as a translator for the Tamil boat refugees. Grace remained a SOC member, friend, and part of the SOC sisterhood all her life, and sadly, she passed away just two months after Akka. Though SOC was housed and given the facilities for daily functioning of the organization, but did not have the funding for running the organization, uh, to have full-time staff or other expenses. Earlier to raise funds, we have organized many garage sales uh, many times. This time we decided to give cooking classes and raise the money. Akka was in forefront with other members to have uh, to teach classes. Uh, the success of our first try encouraged us to continue. With intervals, we gave several sessions of cooking classes, sales, um, raised some funds. Whenever Akka was in Montreal, she fully participated and shared her simple, delicious, uh, recipes, which I have many, I still cherish them. The early states of Port of Akka and other help establish SOC in the community as well as in the government. Akka's involvement in SOC continued for many years. Our English classes were and is still run by volunteers and are only for women. 
Whenever Akka and Mosi visited Montreal, they were always ready and willing to teach. Women also looked forward to have them as their teachers, especially to have Akka there. Those were fun classes for women. Between teaching, Akka would encourage them to talk about their interest, exchange recipe, some singing, some storytelling. These activities were not necessarily in English only. There were mixed languages which made learning less stressful and fun. Students during the classes, during uh, discussion, Akka will say, whenever you come to India, come visit me, come stay with in my home. So everybody was still saying that she loves me, she invited me, you know, I am so special to her. And I think one lady, she went to India, she visited Akka, and she was so proud that she, she was close to Akka and she went there. And I was one of them that I visited Akka in her home. I love that one. Though Akka was not there, only Sohas was there, but I stay in her home, so I am very proud. And you know that during my work with the car that time, I learned a lot about administration because Akka's teaching was so different. And that, that love that comes, tu aisa matkar, tu ye kar, that word too really, really bring people together closer because tu we don't have in English. Tu we have in Hindi, Urdu language that only some people can use that word to bring people closer, and that was Akka. Thank you. Sock means many things to many people. Yes, it's about providing services to the South Asian community, but it's also about feminism, humanism, activism, sisterhood, solidarity, and friendship. Akka took part in all these aspects of Sok, and she became a very good friend to many of us. Akka had such a big heart. She was generous with her love and her friendship. Akka's great personality traits, the energy, the concentration, the incisive mind, made her so excellent at her work, at her writing, and of course at her Scrabble competitions with Daya. But also, these same great personality traits made Akka a wonderful friend. When you were with Akka, she was so keenly interested in you and everything going on in your life. Akka would make you feel like she had all the time in the world for you, even though she was so busy. And you, she made you feel that you must be a BFF, best of friends. She was supportive, kind, sympathetic, and completely discreet. You could share confidences, and feel completely secure. Akka was down to earth and open. She shared her happiness and she shared her sorrows. I teach history and I ask my students, what does it mean to be human? Akka knew. She knew what it meant to be the best kind of human. She knew it brilliantly. Sorry. And she lived her life as a most inspiring principled and loving human being. I'm so honored to have had the opportunity to be friends with Akka at SOC here in Montreal and in New Delhi. And it's an honor to share in this afternoon full of warm expression of love for Akka. Thank you. Thank you, Sadika. Thank you, Diane. I'll now invite Dolores Chu uh, to speak on behalf of Seras. And thank you everyone for again for being here with all of us this afternoon. Uh, thank you and celebrate the legacy of this great and wonderful woman who has enriched us all so immensely. Akka was consistent and never wavered. In her life, it should be never wave, <laughs> wavered, not wayward. <laughs> she wasn't wayward. <laughs> Maybe she was Shri, yeah, sometimes. Um, in her life, she was guided by principles of democracy and equality, 
gender, caste, and community. She lived a rich life, and even though she occupied eminent positions, she did so with simplicity and integrity, never exploiting position or rank. She was dedicated to the betterment of her country people and had little time or patience for fawning, duplicity, or hypocrisy. Some of you may already know about SARAS, a forum and action group committed to peace, secularism, and democratic development in South Asia. It was founded by Montrealers, including our late beloved friend, Dr. Daya Varma, who is also Akka's son-in-law, in the wake of the destruction of the Babri Mosque in 1992 by Hindu ethno-nationalists. This shocking act tore asunder, in the most dramatic way, the post-colonial consensus of secularism, however problematic it was. Its reverberations were felt widely, including in diasporic communities in places like Montreal. Many of those involved in Seras had been part of earlier diasporic formations such as IPANA, the Indian People's Association in North America, which worked to oppose <coughs> Indira Gandhi's emergency. Akka was involved and present throughout from the Apana days of the mid-1970s in discussions, public education, strategizing, and document writing. She was also a good listener and took into account all points of view. She had lived through pre-independence and then the post-independence building of the country based on progressive ideals and principles of equality and secularism, participating in movements and organizations that she helped build and she brought historical knowledge, clarity, depth, breadth, and context to our understanding and our work. As a woman and mother, she also served as an example, engaged in political work, which can often be very patriarchal, negotiating the domestic and work outside the home spheres, but also as someone of immense experience who we could all learn from. When 9-11 happened and the attacks on Afghanistan began, Akka experienced physically debilitating symptoms. It was too much for someone who had dedicated her life to peace and democracy and in the latter decades of her years to now see how this can be torn to shreds within days. It takes a long time to build. It doesn't take long to destroy. So even though sad to get the news of Akka's death in early May, as she said, it was also strangely comforting that she was spared the knowledge of the BJP victory in the last Indian election. She had already lived through the previous tenure of Modi in power as prime minister and earlier when he was the chief minister of Gujarat and the genocide against Muslims happened there. In his first tenure as prime minister, lynching of Muslims had become normative as well assassinations, use of state agents and institutions to intimidate people who may offer resistance, takeover of national educational and other institutions by ideological appointees. She was spared his return for a second time as prime minister, this time now with even greater powers as we are seeing, blitzkrieg speed and efficiency to wipe the slate clean of what is good and positive in India. Vijaya was an ardent advocate of the power of progressive education to open the mind and empower children and youth to take their place in the country and build for its betterment. She privileged rationalism. She is being spared the violation of scientific thought, the imposition of obscurantism, the destruction of education, and the vilification of eminent scholars, researchers, institutions, and organizations, and what is now being made to pass for education and research. She would be appalled at what is happening in Kashmir and would recognize the removing of Section 370 from the Indian Constitution as the start of the dismantling of the Constitution itself. So in Saras, we remember Vijaya and are so grateful for what she taught us with great love. Nobody's fool and a political person, she saw the humanity in people and was compassionate. She befriended those who she might not agree with politically, and bestowed love and affection on them. We see it as fitting that based on her ability to create and build, she would want us to confront the politics of hate and destruction and come together, come together to build resistance to it before it destroys the India she loved and helped to build. Thank you. Now, uh, for
for the representative of the third organization, Raghu, would you come to the front? Uh, Raghu is speaking on behalf of Kabir Cultural Center. Thank you, Dolores. Good day, everyone. I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to speak about Akka, both on behalf of Kabir Cultural Center and on my personal behalf. <coughs> Akka was associated with Kabir Center since its inception in 2002 and wrote with a lot of insight about its very first concert called Rashtravani held on the 3rd of May, 2003. The first movie from our film club, which was shown on 7th of July, 2004 in this very auditorium, was called My Mother, India, a funny but poignant story of a Sikh family caught up in the 1984 massacres. Akka lent a personal copy of the film for the screening. It is she who introduced us to Professor Thomas Waugh, right here, and distinguished Montreal filmmaker Rock Demers, who is also with us today, both of whom have always supported Kabir Center in its cinema-related activities. The film club of, of the center gave rise to the South Asian Film Festival of Montreal, of which Dikti spoke earlier. The rest, as they say, is history. Akka will always be remembered, among other things, whenever we think of our film festival. When Kabir Center was opened to public membership in 2010, Akka was the first one, was among the first to enroll herself as a member. And when we had our first annual general body meeting in 2011, she was unanimously elected as a member emeritus of the board. Note, no such post had been contemplated in the bylaws of Kabir Center, but everyone thought it was a good idea. And the credit goes to Maya Kankoja, who is right here, who made the proposal. Akka was the first one to read and respond to all the emails addressed to board members, sometimes in appreciation and sometimes with concern and sound advice based on her own vast experience. Akka personified many great qualities. I shall give you just a couple of examples. Maybe around 20 years ago, one of her good friends, Husna, passed away, and we had gathered in their home in South Shore with her husband, Abdul, for some sort of prayer session, I believe. I was standing outside, and the sun was beating down on a very warm summer day. At a distance, I saw a lonely, not very distinct figure walking towards us from the end of the street. Imagine Omar Sharif on hot Arabian sands in Lawrence of Arabia, in Lawrence of Arabia. you know, you, you see a, 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 a shimmering shade, you know, in the glaring light of sunshine. And as the figure approached, I could recognize that it was Akka, carrying a heavy bag all by herself. So I changed my style too, and we played less with rules and regulations and more with approval and admiration. When she stopped visiting Montreal, we continued playing online. And in the last year or so, her moves became less and less frequent. Once in a while, I'd get a message that Akka made a move. And I could see in my watch that it was 2 a.m. in New Delhi. There would be a flurry of moves for about 30 minutes or so, and then it would all end. So I figured out her sleeping pattern, and I was glad to know from time to time that at least she was physically and mentally functional, even at such an advanced age. Kindness, compassion, erudition, wit, self-reliance, intellectual curiosity, global perspective and awareness, deep roots in Indian culture and history, resilience to terrible adversities, friendship for all generations. I could go on and on and on, 
but the image that instantly appears in my mind at the mention of Akka is one of a bright face and a radiant presence, much like this image behind me. I am not alone in feeling a little wistful at the passing of this multi splendid extraordinary human being. But Akka had something to say to people who feel, who felt so in her favorite Sanskrit language, which I shall reserve for the end. May I now invite Dr. Birenda Prasada, the president of Kabir Center in its formative years. Biren will speak for himself and Sushma. They were both very dear friends of Akka, and we shall pass the mic to Biren, as he would not be able to come down. Thank you. first met Akka a long time ago. Uh, I was a professor at IIT Kanpur and head of the IIT TV Center. And uh, I was appointed to the board of NCERT Educational De Development Center, which was headed by Akka at that time. Now, all of you who have known Akka would know that no meeting with Akka or just casual or formal. An impression was left that I stayed with you for a long, long time. But it was an early meeting at that time. We got to know each other, but we didn't have too much time to interact with each other. Anyway, so <clears throat> decades later, I really got to know Akka. Because in 2004, I was volunteered by friends like Raghu and others to become the president of Kabir's Cultural Center and came to know and work with Akka over the years. Akka was an outstanding person with her feet firmly planted in tradition and in modernity, a scholarship and activism. The fledgling Kabir Center was making a major transition from being an organization that invited musicians to present classical music in the basement of music lovers to becoming an organization with vision of encouraging mutual respect amongst the members of South Asian diaspora in Montreal and building bridges with the larger community. The center was broadcasting, broadening its offering to include other art forms such as film shows, book clubs, etc. Uh, as Raghu mentioned, uh, Akka went out of the way to help us and mentor us, us in our endeavors. In July 2004, we had our first film club uh, showing of an award-winning documentary, My Mother India, in this very hall. The film was chosen and pro provided by Akka. It was shown to a full house, and the show was followed by a very lively discussion. Throughout the years, Akka mentored our film activities that has now blossomed into the South Asian Film Festival of Montreal, quite a presence. Um, again, she was a, uh, a enthusiastic supporter of the book club, which was formed at the same time by Sushma, and Sushma had written something, said she may not be able to be here, so I should read it, but since she's here, I would pass on the mic to her. Lastly, our lives have been enriched by our association with Akka. Well, what can I say? Uh, Akka was everything that you all have said. Uh, I actually got to know Akka pretty late in life, uh, more to do with the uh, Kabir Center. And uh, um, I was totally overwhelmed because I'd heard so much about her and what she had achieved and who she was and da da da, on and on and on. I said, oh no, how am I going to ever be with her and work with her uh, in any form? So I used to try and I was in complete awe and just, you know, hang back somewhere. And Akka made it a point to get to know me. and. Uh, she, when, you know, uh, she 
decided to join the book club, which I had been somehow uh, asked to manage to begin with. And um, while uh, I was trying to figure out how to go about the whole thing, because this is the first time that I was um, really dealing with a group, and then we set up our aims, and uh, Akka was a big help, and uh, because my aim was somewhat different from what normally the book uh, clubs are run, we uh, wanted to really to, you know, um, let's see, we wanted to bring together people from our community and the larger community and try to read the same book and uh, then give their opinions. There was um, no one leader. We, each person read the book and they gave us their perspective uh, and from the prisms of their backgrounds. And, uh, Akka, you know, Akka was there and I said, oh my goodness, she's such a learned person. How am I going to ever <laughs> deal with this? But she sat there quietly, she listened, she came up with suggestions and was really, really very encouraging and supporting. And we were able to start functioning and it went on and is still going on for many, many years. And. Uh, people who attended because they were people of South Asian community and the larger community here, and they, be, they have become very good friends and they have done well. Um, so very quietly in her own calm way, she would be there and make a suggestion or something later on, but gave me a lot of support there. I'm very grateful to her and uh, it helped she became a mentor for me, more or less, and I felt good about it, and it went well. And um, I have very fond memories of Akka. Uh, she used to, uh, we saw quite a bit of her when she was here, and uh, the last time I met her was almost three years back when every time we went to India, we would go visit with her, and she would pamper us was uh, about two and a half years back, or three years back actually, and um, she was at her gate. She came out of her house, was waiting there at the gate for the taxi to arrive because in, uh, we lived quite far away and um, I, I just couldn't get over it to see her welcoming so much and of course she pampered us when we were there. I've learned a lot from her, and uh, I'm very, very grateful to her. And we, she will always be with us in our hearts. Thank you. Here he <coughs> writes the following. A few words about Akka. There are things about Akka that I want to share with you that have little to do with her knowing Satyajit Ray, Louis Mal, Marin Lal Sen, Nasiruddin Shah, or James Bond. Yes, and I believe she outlasted many of the latter's various incarnations. For many years, I was not really in contact with many of my close friends from the 70s in the diasporic Kenyan community. I was traveling a lot. But whenever Aka came into town, fully energized to lay siege on Montreal, she did pick up the phone to inquire about me. Her rocks sliding down a gorge, rolling thunder telephonic greeting in Bangla, English, Hindi, and all combined in a single sentence meant simply, I'm coming to see you on such and such a date, period. So she came, hugged us both, and about 10 minutes later, when her daughter Shri, my wife Lisa, and our friend Maya were talking to each other in the kitchen, we could hear pretty convincing snores coming from the living room. <laughs> she had a sense of doing things promptly and right by her own standards. Easy over, no sweat, her way. Once done, it was on to other things. Where is the nun? Chalo Dili. 
For those of you who have had a chance to go through her incredible compilation from Rajas and Yogis to Gandhi and beyond, put out excellently by Seagull Books, will know that Akka covered enormous territory. She talked about empire, being against war, about stereotyping, about appropriation, about decolonization, about otherness, about exoticization, about orientalism, and she also predicted the moronic diasporic culture of 50,000 in a Houston stadium saying, howdy, Modi. <laughs> and she did it all without proclaiming herself to be an anti-imperialist, anti-racist, secularist, guerrilla fighter, or leader of any insurgency of any sort. However, let me say this. She was Azadi material, no doubt. She was all of the above. Sometimes one got more pleasure out of reading the bibliography and notes in her books. She told Louis Mal, camera, sorry, she told Louis Mal's cameraman to consider taking a shower instead of waiting to fill the bathtub in a majestic Calcutta <coughs> hotel. The cameraman was having a great laugh about the prehistoric water heating system in the Grand Hotel in Calcutta. Practical she was, but that was her way to tell died in the wool colonial minds to move on. Less banter, more hustle, there is a world beyond empire. Reading her book, one is quietly persuaded that she knew about the onset of the morbid ahistoricity and anti-science mood of the world in many regions. One of her greatest contributions to education in India was the introduction of science teaching and reasoning from class one on, through a combined syllabus and use of incipient technology. Maybe it is all outdated now, since certain ministers in India have suggested that the Pandavas were already using internet and wireless technology during the wars in the Mahabharata 5,152 years ago. Right. Having said all that, let's say we are all here today missing the passing away of an enormous bus bar. You know what the bus bar is? It is a flat copper bar that connects electrical outlets in a large factory or warehouse. It is hidden up in cable trays beyond view. It connects Emperor Ashoka, Jalanwalia Bag, Rossellini, Tilak, the obscenity that was ruled Britannia, the Gita and Mahabharata, Indian independence, the politics of centering and Islamophobia. She was on to many things. I'd say that every white person or brown person pretending to be white who wants to make a film about India, on India, or shoot in an Indian locale should check in with Vijaya Mole. Thank you and my thanks to Sri for asking me to say these few words about her great mother. I see that uh, Rana Bose exceeded his limit, but I did ask for permission uh, to have my two minutes worth of my own opinions. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, Akka's sense of uh, duty and her energy. About 30 years ago, I found, um, I came across a biography of my father written in Marathi, which was my father's and Akka's mother tongue. And I don't read Marathi, so Akka very kindly uh, volunteered to translate it for me. So she sat me, after dinner, she sat me in front of a computer and started dictating the whole book. At about two in the morning, she looked at me and she said, Oh, Maya, you look tired. <laughs> Let me make you a cup of tea. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a great honor to uh, join this group and speak about my dear friend, Akka. I knew her for the last 35 years of her life, and I was influ I've been influenced by her in so many ways, I will miss her beyond measure. A generous, gentle genius 
Aka unstintingly opened my eyes to independent documentary cinema in India and made possible my modest incursions as a research and film lover into its rich visions of an India crying out for social justice and political change. I was deeply honored when Aka asked me to write the foreword to From Rajas and Yogis, uh, her gigantic and wonderful book published in 2010. Uh, please forgive me for recycling some of the content of that foreword uh, because these snippets seem all the more telling in this moment of our loss. Akka put me in touch with a vibrant network of filmmakers from Kolkata to Tiruvananthapuram, whom I proceeded to contact and meet on screen as well as in person. Everywhere these committed visionaries greeted me with open arms as soon as I mentioned Akka and shared their work and ideas about the future of activist documentary in India. My humble research project could not have happened without the mentorship and inspiration of this kindly and generous matriarch, then in her late 60s. Uh, her conviction, one I share, of the scope for individual courage and commitment in the real world we, in we inhabit is a conviction too easily lost in our ideological and geopolitical cynicism. I shared with her the principle that our interpersonal relationships can be the crucial motor of learning and understanding. So many people here have talked about friendship. The summer of 2000, when she sat in on my Indian cinema course on this campus, my students were amazed, I believe it was in this room, and my students were amazed at this small, elegant woman, clad variously in brocades or khadi. I don't know what made her choose on a given day what to wear, <laughs> but my students had, were amazed how elegant she was. And they had to listen to her quiet voice, it demanded careful listening, but she never failed to extend the subject at hand. And then there are the isolated words and phrases that pop out of my introduction. And here's a list of words. Bravado, open-minded, eloquent, rigorous, conscientious, perfectionist, colorful anecdotes. I have lots of anecdotes about Akka. And if anyone wants to hear some of the funnier ones, you ask me afterwards. For example, the one about the ball of beer in her purse one evening. <laughs> Uh, passion, discretion, her uncompr uncompromising left of center analysis and commitment shines. The cinema is a terrain for morality and political struggle. An exceptional and decidedly uncommon person. And finally, her belief in the inherited values of karuna, compassion and empathy, and ahimsa, nonviolence and truth. My last contact with Akka was a few months ago via email when I asked Sri to help me find a translation for the obscure Marathi word Dharavta, which was the title of a film I was investigating. Uh, she didn't know, despite her profound knowledge in uh, Marathi. She went to her uh, very smart and very alert 97-year-old mother, and together they came up with a regional variation uh, of Dharavta meaning threshold. Uh, it's a very fitting word because Akka has moved across the threshold of this world. And I know she had many other translations, books, films, recipes, and jokes still piled up inside her wise, committed, and razor sharp head. It is now up to the rest of us to carry on her legacy. Thank you. The, the next contribution will be one from Ali Kazmi. Ali is not here with us, but Alia, Alia Varma, will be uh, sharing Ali's contribution. So again, this is from Ali Kazmi. I'm sorry I cannot be here today, for I believe that gatherings such as these are so important for those left behind to mourn and celebrate collectively. Writing this has allowed me to grieve for Akka and to marvel at our connection. 
30 years ago, I found myself in Montreal, attending the 50th anniversary celebrations for the National Film Board of Canada. I was invited to a barbecue at Sri and Daya's home. Back then, I was a shy, emerging filmmaker who had recently graduated from the film program at York University. I found my way to the garden across from an elegant woman dressed in a sari. She, looked my gaze, she locked my gaze in a firm stare. So your name is Cosme, she started. Yes, I replied. Who was your dada, paternal grandfather? I was startled by this inquiry and burst out laughing. My dada died a couple of years before I was born. No one has ever asked me that question. I want to know his name, she insisted, unmoved by my response. I had no idea where this was going. Ali Akbar Kazmi, I said. She gave a hint of a smile, crossed her hands with satisfaction and said, I thought so. <laughs> now I was shocked. What do you mean? She chuckled and said, I worked with your grandfather for many years. There is something about you that reminds me of him. I look nothing like my grandfather, and I had not met anyone outside the family who had known him. Akka would go on to tell me that she had hired her to she had hired him to assist the Patna Teachers College. She gave me the gift of getting to know my grandfather as an academic and employer. We would go on to discover that she had been on my interview committee to get into a graduate program for film <laughs> school in Delhi. Over the years, we met a few times, and we got to know each other when we spent more than a week as jury members for the Mumbai International Film Festival for documentaries and short films. She insisted that the Films Division of India, who organized the festival, pull out a 35-film print for our seminar, every seminal short film, Ek Anik or Ekta, and screen it for all jury members. I recall her pride and delight seeing it again once on a big screen. After the festival, I accompanied Akka to her birthplace, Badlapur, where she was going to attend a wedding. It was a rich and immersive journey. I had the rare privilege of witnessing a remarkable woman's journey back to the landscape of her childhood, reliving the struggles and challenges, and then going on to become a truly iconic figure in Indian cinema. I feel deeply honored when Akka included me, included my film Continuous Journey in her last book. Akka was a part of my history long before I was born and will continue to be a part of my history long after I'm gone. For now, I will always remember the last time we met in Montreal, where she affectionately held onto my hand during the entire time we sat next to each other. Akka, I miss you. Thank you. Thank you, Alia. Thank you, Ali, for sending us this wonderful message. I now invite Rob the Mares, who I got to know also through Akka. Vijaya Mule was so proud to be from India, and at the same time was a real citizen of the world. She had so many good friends in England, in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, in Japan, in Latin America, and many of them filmmakers like Kobayashi from Japan, Zanussi from Poland, Mr. Rupala from Czechoslovakia, Louis Mal from France, and me from Quebec. Vijaya was not speaking French easily, but was understanding it perfectly and was reading French without any problem. So I thought she would be pleased today to hear a few words in French. Très cher Vijaya, vous n'êtes plus parmi nous, mais vous resterez indéfiniment dans mon cœur et mon esprit. Une lumière comme la vôtre ne peut s'éteindre. Une lumière créée par votre intelligence, votre humour, votre générosité, votre savoir, votre énergie, votre ouverture sur le monde et tant d'autres sources. Je vous ai rencontré pour la première fois à Calcutta il y a de cela 55 ans et depuis, d'une façon ou d'une autre, Nous avons toujours été en communication et nous le resterons. Merci. You might want to share personal memories or 
thoughts and so we'll have an open mic for 15 minutes. We have several microphones here so if you raise your hand we'll just bring it to you. I'm here in my own right since I had a warm relationship with Akka over many years but more particularly I'm here as Jean Chapman's partner. As many of you probably know, Jean is in palliative care and is unable to be here today, much to her distress. Over the last few days, we talked quite a bit about Akka and about the things that Jean would like me to say today. Um, the first thing that Jean said was that Akka had taken her into her family. And she thought about that for a little while. She said, no, that's the wrong word. What she did was embrace me into the family. The one anecdote that she wanted me to pass on relates to the time when Jean was studying at JNU in Delhi. And she told me that she had a habit of walking over to Akka's house on a Sunday morning. And Jean explained to me, and I think I got it right, but the, I believe the hem of a sari is not made of silk. It's made from uh, a matching fabric, but a more resistant fabric that doesn't get dirty and doesn't wear. And Jean said that when she went to Akka's house, there was always a pile of saris waiting for her, and her job each uh, Sunday was to repair the hems of the saris. <laughs> And she said, but what was special about it was, during the course of the day, how many interesting and varied people always dropped by the house. So thank you very much. I'm honored to be here, and I have my own very warm memories of Akka. And I have to say that I'm so glad I did come here today because, as everyone has mentioned, Akka was Akka in her own right. A person who really affected people with the way they worked. I came to Akka because I was one of the first few people who had joined in the conversation of forming South Asia Women center of South Asia Women the community. There was no center at that time. I really did feel as a complete outside, outsider. I had no idea. I had met, not met any of the groups. And I was so happy that I was given a fair chance to say what I had to say and how what we all said. I came to Canada in 68 and we joined this group because I felt I had to identify myself, go over this image of being an immigrant and a brown person. So here was this group more varied than anybody I had ever met. and. We continued till I became quite active in the center. And as Diane mentioned, during the time of the boat people arriving, I happened to be there. And Akka was always a mentor. And I took on the responsibility of answering the phone and letting in the press come in. Akka put me in my place. She sort of said, you are enthusiastic, but you have to learn how to use your enthusiasm. And she was, as everybody said, I learned a lot from her. I belonged to the community. I became part of the family. And because of her learning and teaching and justice, there are many of us who should not let her memory go and learn the lessons that she has left behind. 
Thank you. Thank you, Femida. Uh, I now invite Shaheen Munir to sing a song uh, by Rabindra Sangeet, Bijono Kore. Thank you. I think it was a choice of Akkar's. I would like to thank, thank the organizers of today's memorial gathering for giving me a unique opportunity to pay my tribute to our beloved Akka, Vijaya Mule, by rendering her selected Rabindu Shungit, Aji Bijono Ghare. Before that, I want to uh, express my thoughts and feelings about Akka. I was very fortunate to meet Vijaya Mule in late 1996, within a few months of my arrival in Montel. She was one of the, those pioneering women of South Asian origins who had the vision of creating a solid foundation for women of South Asian origin in Montel. I found her to be an extremely kind generous and affectionate woman, an educatorist and filmmaker, whose legacies will inspire women from generation to generation. I will read out the English translation of the song Aji Bijono Ghare before my singing. To my, lo to my lonely abode, if you come, empty-handed at night. Do you think I will dishearten me? It will dishearten me? I know, I know my friend. Your arms are there, always for me. My days were spent somehow in worldly cares, but the time to bring myself to you now has come. Let the darkness perfect the sky let your touch fill my heart. I had immersed myself in the swing of life, but now life and death will pull me from both sides. Aji Bijan Ghari Nishi Thura Te Aash Bejo Di Shunno Haate Ami Tai Te Ki Bhai Mani Jani Jani Bundhu Jani Tumar Aache To Haat Khani Aji Bijana Ghare Chava Pawar Pothe Pothe Din Kete Chhe Kono Mate Chava Pawar Pothe Pothe Akash on to Kora 
তোমার পরশ থাকুক আমার হৃদয় ভরা জীবন দোলায় দুলি দুলি আপনারে ছিলিম ভুলে জীবন দোলায় দুলি দুলি আপনারে ছিলিম ভুলে এখন জীবন মরণ দুদিক দিয়ে নিবি আমায় জানি 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 বন্ধু জানি তোমার আছে তো হাত খানি আজি বিজন ঘরে আক্কা ইউ লাভ ফর রবীন্দ্রসঙ্গীত উইল বি সোর্স অফ ইন্সপিরেশন অলওয়েজ ফর মি উই অল লাভ ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ কনক্লুশন অ্যাগেন সামথিং দ্যাট আক্কা হ্যাড organized or requested yes as uh, shri had mentioned earlier i was wading through this long remarkable epic mahabharata which is probably over 100000 verses in which the section on bhagavad bhagavad gita contains about 700 verses and i think akka had picked up one which would uh, fit the occasion for those who feel sad about her passing and it goes like this in its original vasaunsi jirnani yatha vihaya navani grahanati nara aparani tatha sharirani vihaya jirna anyani samyati navani dehi it means just like after shedding old worn out garments humans put on new clothes so does the soul with the body shed the old worn out body and goes on to accept another body so friends let us rejoice in our memory and celebrate our life before we go on to enjoy the refreshments which have been provided outside in the foyer i'd like to thank on behalf of all the three organizations who have organized this memorial to all of you here who have taken the trouble of coming here in spite of the inclement weather. The performers, Hita, Shaheen, and Rakesh, for performing in honor of Akka. Of course, the organizing committee members, including Mosul and Iftekar, <coughs> who carried a lot of load today to provide the refreshments. And to Johnny of Concordia, who has provided excellent sound. Thank you very much. And Please stay with us for enjoying the refreshments. Thank you.